Welcome home. I'm Dr. Tama, a minister, licensed psychologist, and sacred artist. And this is Homecoming, a podcast to facilitate your journey home to yourself. While I will provide weekly inspiration and mental health tips, this podcast is not the same as personalized therapy. I'm so excited you're on the journey. If you want to request specific topics or to submit a poem for me to read on the podcast, email me at homecomingpodcast at gmail.com. Also, to build our community, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Let's begin. Welcome home, co-journers. I'm glad you're here for another episode, and we have a wonderful topic on today, the journey to self-love. And I am excited to introduce to you our guest, Dr. Jaya John. Hi, Jaya. Hi, (laughs) Tama. Oh, I want to share with our audience all about you, and I want you all to go out and get Dr. Jaya's books. But let me tell you who he is, a part of who he is, and then you will meet him over our time here today. Dr. Jaya John was orphan born on ancient Puebloan lands in the high desert of New Mexico and is an internationally recognized freedom worker, author, and poet. Jaya is the founder of Soul Water Rising, a global rehumanizing mission to eradicate oppression that has donated thousands of Jaya's books in support of social healing and offers grants and scholarships to displaced and vulnerable youth. He is the author of numerous books, including Fragrance After Rain, Daughter Drink This Water, and Freedom, Medicine Words for Your Brave Revolution. Jaya writes, narrates, and produces the podcast, I Will Read For You, the voice and writings of Jaya John, and is the founder of Freedom Project, a global initiative reviving traditional gathering and storytelling practices to fertilize social healing and liberation. He is a former professor of social psychology at Howard University and has spoken to over a million people worldwide. And today he is here with us. (laughs) Welcome, Jaya. Thank you, Tamo. Thank you for having me. My heart is truly grateful. It's yes, I am grateful for your yes and grateful for us to talk today about self-love. Yes, and I get many requests for this topic as people are trying to heal and work toward loving themselves. So I want to just start the conversation by asking from your perspective, uh, what is self-love? Thank you, Tama. What is self-love? Such a profound and broad question and, and at the same time, very intimate What is self-love? So what I'd like to do is frame our conversation culturally for you and your listeners, because for me, when I think about self-love and, you know, work within that idea and feel and live within that idea, so much of it really, like for all of us, is for me a matter of my own journey and cultural rooting. I, you know, physically, if if one was to look at me, it's pretty obvious I am an African descent person. I'm also born for Blackfeet Nation and Cherokee Nation. So I'm indigenous in both senses because, you know, African people, we have always been indigenous. Something that, you know, colonialism has tried its darndest to erase. But we are an indigenous people, meaning we, our lives are in relation to the land and to, to our world relationship before accumulation, relationship over, over all things, right? That's the essence of indigeneity. We're in, in relation with, with each other and all things. And so I, I was born in La Tierra del Encanto, Nuevo Mexico, the land of enchantment. I was born in the desert by the river, the Rio Grande. And that is absolutely a soaked and drenched indigenous land, Puebloan, Diné, Navajo, Hopi, Apache. And that's where I grew up. And so that is in my bones. That is in my blood as, as well. But, you know, ancestrally, it's a strong part of my way of experiencing this world. And 
and relating to this world, this indigenous sense of connectedness. Chief Seattle. Chief Seattle was a leader and a mystic who lived in the northwest part of this country. And, you know, he is quoted as as saying that humankind has not woven the web of life. We are but a strand within the web. Therefore, what we do to the web, we do to ourselves. Mm. And that uh, resonates with me very deeply when we when we consider this idea of self-love, because for me. In the broader uh, so-called mainstream culture of, of this country that you and I live in, self is a very, it's a highly individualistic concept, right? In some ways, this is a very hyper individualistic culture. Yeah. We're speaking of the broader culture, the, the oppressing culture. I'll use that word. And like everything else that comes through this culture, this idea of self-love has become saturated with these ideas of the individual, the, the very, very personal, right? And to a degree where many folks, we approach self-love almost in a vacuum. It's like, you know, what, what do I need to do for me? You know, me, 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 me. Indigenously, the self is a we. And so for me to answer that question of yours, you know, what is self-love? I naturally arrive at my own living experience with love as a force flowing through all the things of which I am a part. So I can say to you, self-love for me has as much to do with me loving my body and my heart and my mind and my soul and my spirit and my life and my journey as it also has to do with uh, the mountains of which I'm a part. I go up, I go up a mountain on many days. And, and, you know, for me, that's me unioning with myself. That mountain is myself. The sky is myself. The ocean is myself. The living world, this wilderness is myself. So for me, when, when I'm asked, what is self-love? Self-love is, is my practice of an experience of being immersed in the communion of things and what I am. It is for me in a more specific sense, the daily experience of allowing love to flow through not only my personal individual vessel, but to let it flow through all things, you know, family, friends, strangers, all living things, let it all of that love flow through me, let it soak me, let it awaken me, let it heal me, let it be medicine. And there is a companion to that inward flow, which is the outward flow of love that does not originate in me, but it flows through me. And so, you know, I wake with this sense of duty and obligation to be a, a vessel and not a blockade mm. for that greater spirit of love to flow out into the world, which is me. And whether I have warm feelings for a person or a thing, or I have been harmed by a person or a thing, I yet have that sacred spiritual duty to be a vessel and opening a dilation for love rather than to be a barrier for love, a dam to love, um, to not prevent in my being love from going where it is supposed to go and being what it is supposed to be. I hope that makes some sense. Yes, I absolutely love it. And it is so <laughs> important for us to attend to culture and context and, you know, these notions of identity. And as you say, the notions of the self. And I love where we landed of being the vessel and not the barrier. Yeah. Right? Being yeah. open. Well, I know you do a lot of work within trauma and I, you know, for us as human beings, that is likely the most significant factor that leads to us becoming that obstruction for right. love. Yes, we, we yeah. become harmed. We, we, mm -hmm. To live in this world means we are hurt by our journey. It's unavoidable. The trauma then can calcify in us and become 
crystallized, calcified, it can become tumorous, it can become scar tissue and adhesion. And the trauma that is untreated and uncared for in us is, in, in my experience, that, that factor that leads us to becoming so blocked and so constipated, if you will, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so walled off. Yeah. And yes. um, yeah, and I'm speaking for myself, certainly, and, mm -hmm. and I reflect back on my journey and the ways in which I cared for or did not care for my own uh, trauma and, and hurt mm -hmm. along the way and what price not only did I pay mm -hmm. for not caring for myself, not loving myself, but what price did those in my life pay? What price did other living things pay? Yeah. For me not loving myself. So self-love is it can feel like a very trite and commercial commercialized product of capitalism these days. But for me, you know, we, we could use another language if self-love doesn't do it for us. We were really just talking about this duty we have as a living thing to be well, to heal, to mm -hmm. let love, which is life's true force, flow. Yes. And in terms of your journey, you started to speak of it in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And in your bio, you talk about being orphan born. So can you talk some about how that affected the journey yeah. of self-love in this force? Yeah, thank you, Tim. I Just yesterday, I was, I just come across words and I devour them, right? And I was reading about Moses and um, that was a journey that you know, as I learned about Moses as a child, I, tears came because I instantly recognized the parallels between the journey of Moses and my own journey. You know, he was born, he was an orphan born, you know, left on the, on the river and um, raised by people not his own. And so that was the case for me. I was born in, in, in New Mexico, as I shared, and and I was separated from my mother immediately at birth. So, you know, she she never had the opportunity to hold me, to smell me, to, you know, do the things that a mother does with a child in those sacred in, initial moments. And, and of course, I didn't have that opportunity as well. And so I was truly orphan born. I mean, I was born October 26th and trick or treat Halloween five days later, I was in my first placement, right? And so when I say I was orphan born, I'm at a place in my journey where there is a love and a gratitude and a peace that comes out from my soul when I say orphan born. I'm not speaking of a tragedy. I'm not speaking out of, out of grief or lament. I'm speaking out of glory and, and gratitude and praise to say, wow, look what was done with my life. Circumstances were arranged. My path was ordered in such a way that I would be forced to either learn how to love myself or I would perish. Mm. Or yeah. I would perish. And if yes. I were to perish, then all of the purpose sewn up into my soul, into my life for being here in the world, the reason I was given breath and allowed to live through that gestation and delivery, the reason I was conceived in the first place, the reason I was allowed to survive birth and infancy and childhood, the purpose of all of that would have been lost if I had perished. And so there was this very intense season of, you know, for me from conception through let's say, I don't know, 18, I'll land on, on age 18 for the moment, where it was a, a very critical struggle and suffering going on between self-hatred and self-love and self-hatred was winning. Mm. Self-hatred was dominating. Self-hatred was, uh, you know, winning all the trophies in my soul, in my heart and in my mind, as far as the stories I was telling myself about who I was and who I was not. Am I worthy of love? Am I worthy of, am I able to be loved? Am I capable of loving? Why am I here? You know, these, these, these old spirituals the negro spirituals you know would flow through me you know you why am i here you know i wish i never was born but, you know or, or um you know this sometimes i feel mm -hmm. <laughs> like yes. a child 
a long way from home. And so I just had this very intense and purposeful experience where I was having to reckon with whether I was going to be in this world, stay in this world and be alive and be healthy and be medicine, or whether I was going to be a destroyer in the indigenous sense. You know, we have that, you know, we raise our children to understand you're either going to be a creator or a destroyer mm -hmm. of, of worlds, not just yourself. Yeah. And so, you know, for me, it is a very intimate and personal thing, this idea of, you know, loving myself. And, and I believe, mm -hmm that loving ourselves it's not like a school assignment it's not a thing where you read some books and you write some papers and you take a test and boom you passed right if we are devoted to the labor of loving ourselves our entire lives and we are blessed to live 100 years still on the last day of that 100th year we still have so far to go when it comes to self-love when it comes to our capacity to love in this world. So I look at it as, as a lifelong way of being. It's a practice, it's a devotion, it's a prayer, mm. it's a roller coaster ride. You know, it's it's all of these things, but it's, you know, I think a lot of people these days, especially younger folks, you know, literally are dying for this love of self. And because our culture has created this impatience, mm. this value on immediate gratification, yeah. we struggle a lot because self-love is not a, it's not something you put in a microwave and then, you know, a bing, 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 and it's done. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. just this aching, glorious, beautiful journey. Mm. And it hurts. Mm -hmm. And it is hopeful and it is tender and it is beautiful and it is dark and heavy and it is tearful and mournful and it is joyful and it is of levity and laughter. It is, it is all these things. And so in a way, for me, loving my personal self and my collective self, which is you, which is every living thing, which is everything that has been and everything that will be. I guess we can say that that is my passion, my purpose. It's why I'm here. It's my path. It's, you know, to pour out and be a fountain to the degree that I am able in the imperfect, in the imperfect ways that I am able. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm. And it is so important as you're naming it is really calling and purpose and the why we are here. And in your personal journey and also in your study of social psychology, mm -hmm. what are some of the barriers that keep us from flowing in that? You know, when you ask about the, the things that can prevent us, can obstruct us from being able to love ourselves in a, in a full and complete and healthy way, in a whole and authentic and organic way attribution comes to mind which is the idea that we as people everything that we experience stories are woven in our minds that presume to explain to us the why of things why am i late to work today why am I stressed out? Why is this person cursing at me? Why was I abandoned? Why was I harmed? Why don't those people like me? Why can't I achieve my dreams? Why is racism so virulent, contagious? Why is sexism and patriarchy so persistent in the world? Our psychology literature is very invested in understanding why things happen, our understanding as humans of why things happen, to what do we attribute these things in the world and these experiences. And when it comes to self-love, I feel that almost immediately when we are, I would take us back to the womb, when we are in our mother's womb, 
I believe we already begin to attribute our experiences. I believe that in some kind of way, you know, as, as living spirits in the womb, we're already weaving stories. And some of those stories may be true stories. Some of those stories may be our misunderstanding of our reality. Mm -hmm. Some of those stories are already in the womb for some of us, stories of trauma, where our mother, we are experiencing our mother's trauma or our ancestors' trauma right there in the womb, and we're trying to make sense of it. Why am I feeling so anxious in the womb here right now? Why do I feel so alone? Why am I feeling hungry? We don't have the, the, the adult language yet, but we're already weaving stories of attribution. Why am I feeling this way? Why do I need these things? What is coming next? What is this fear? By the time we are born, we are already filled. Our brain is wired. You know, our neurons and axons and dendrites are already firing with these attribution stories. And we know through psychology's labor and the labor of other fields and areas, especially again, just indigenous ancestral wisdom, right, through the ages. We know that children are already very much creators of their own story to explain their experience. And early in life, we as children have this tendency to blame ourselves and internalize things that don't feel good. And so I know that you know, in my case, I did a lot of that. You know, I was growing up, I had endless blessings in my life from the very beginning. Some of those blessings were things that felt good to me. Some of those blessings were things that were very painful for me and actually damaging that I still define as a blessing mm -hmm. because I learned at a certain point, I need to change my attribution. As I was growing up and I was growing up experiencing a lot of pain racial pain and uh i think that was you know a lot of it and a lot of it was of course being i'm searching for a word in english but sort of at sea you know unmoored separated from family roots and cultural roots and ancestral roots and so that was another source of pain for me together there was just a lot of pain. And the way that I interpreted that experience, that was my attribution, psychological attribution. I was saying, why, you know, why am I even here? Why am I in this part of the world? Why am I with these people? Why am I in this community at this school? Why do I look like this? Why am I treated like this? Why do people who look like me get treated like this? Yeah. Right. So we're always asking these questions. And then the way we ask them, and the way we answer them, that becomes our attribution. And for me, I, I feel that both through studying psychology and through my personal journey and just being a deeply empathic soul, paying attention to the journeys of others, I see that oftentimes what really makes it difficult and challenging for us to love ourselves deeply and effectively in a way that just manifests as a fruitful life is that our attribution itself, our habits for attribution mm. are not themselves aligned with love. They're aligned with internalized trauma and oppression and, and self-hatred really. Yes. We end up hating ourselves and that can feel like a strong word, hate, but I believe that um, it applies. We, can, we hate our bodies, we hate our faces, we hate our skin, we hate our hair. And oftentimes it's because we've internalized these social messages and values. We hate the pain we feel. So a lot of children are made to feel very shameful about their emotional self. And so, you know, they're, they're shamed for crying and so they learn not to cry. And so they have a, an adverse relationship with their, with their emotions and their tears. And, and so we just, we end up um, through our storytelling, right. preventing self-love from flourishing in us. 
I hope hope that makes sense. Absolutely. And it is so important as you're naming for us to shift the story we tell ourselves, even about the experiences, the things that happen to us is the dominant story, one of the fear and trauma and loss, or how do I see myself through the eyes of love, even through these painful experiences? Amen. 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 And I know we just have a few minutes left, and I do want them to hear you read. Okay. And so the from your text, and you have many books, but Daughter Drink This Water, I told Dr. Jaya when I read this book, I had to go and get another copy for my mother, another copy for my daughter. And I know that you all will love his writings and listening to him read on his podcast. So you could just share with us a piece from Daughter Drink This Water. Thank you, Tama. I appreciate the invitation. So I literally just opened up the book here Mm -hmm. because I had not pre-identified the passage. And I feel that, as usual, I have divinely landed where we need to be for this reading. And so this is, yes, this is from a passage that's titled, Who Are You? And um, I think for most people who have this book, I guess this would be page 124. And it begins, what are you here for? The question and the answer are for your sake and for all of life touched by you. Your love makes you divine. Remember that. Remember yourself. This is a key to peace, healing, and freedom. When you forget who you are, you act like everyone else. Your soul is love. Don't lose your true nature. Pronounce it out loud. Say, I am love and then she wanted peace so she forgot all she was taught and remembered herself yes 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 <laughs> remember I can, I can go longer if you want but you, the, I, don't know, uh, I don't know how we are with time we are right at time but okay. i love that remember yourself yeah, and you I know. Been, yes. No, I was just I was just thinking I, that that phrase always brings me back to Lion King. Yes. And, remember who you are. Remember who you are. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. yes. And then in Black Panther, when it was Panther. show them who you are. <laughs> Ooh, that one had me crying. You know, right. I think that that one does something for us. Yes, it does. Yeah, it does. Show them who you are. So I am so grateful that you have shared with us on today, and I want you all to follow Dr. Jaya more. So please share with them your website and how they can follow you in social media. Mm, Gratitude, Tama. So my website is just my name, jayajohn.com, and that's J-A-I-Y-A-J-O-H-N, jayajohn.com. The main space that I share these medicine words in is um, on Instagram. And again, my handle is just my name, Jaya John. And so you can find me there. I mean, the words end up in other spaces too, but the main place that I I feel most comfortable in terms of social media is, is Instagram. The books are everywhere that books roam. You can find my books. Um, particularly online with stories you you want to check. I'm actually birthing a new book, the book number 16. Oh, hopefully will be, yeah, thank you. That will be hopefully with us in, um, in just a few weeks in October. And that's called Fragrance After Rain. So that's where you all may find me. And I just want to let your listeners know that, you know, I cherish each of your souls in the world. And I'm always praying you well and sending you love because you are worthy and we need we need you we need you to be in love beautiful and on this journey home to ourselves we want to keep in mind this indigenous understanding of self-love both the personal love and the communal love and Mm. so i say thank you to you and for our listeners i invite your soul to tell your heart mind body and spirit Welcome home.